Hi, I'm Golden Ashri. I'm here to present handling data hazards in computer architecture and organization course. So, handling data hazards and control hazards. Hazards means prevent the next instructions in the instruction stream from executing during its designated clock cycle. So, hazard reduces the performance from the ideal speed up gained by pipelining. So, the three classes of hazards. Structural hazard, data hazards, and control hazards. Structural hazards arise from uh, resource conflict when the hardware cannot support all the possible combinations of instructions simultaneously in overlapping the execution. So, data hazards it arises when an instruction depends on the result of the previous instruction. In a way, what uh, that is exposed by the overlapping of instruction in the pipeline. Control hazard. It arises from the pipelining of branches and other instruction that change the PC. Then first one is structural hazards. So when a processor is pipelined, the overlapped execution of instruction requires pipelining of functional units and duplication of resources to allow all possible combinations of instructions in the pipeline. If some combination of instructions cannot be accommodated because of resource conflicts, the processor is said to have a structural hazard. Then what are the instances actually when a function uh, functional unit is not fully pipelined then the sequence of instructions using that uh, unpipelined unit cannot proceed at the rate of 1 per clock cycle. So when some resources has not been duplicated um, enough to allow all combinations of instructions in the pipeline to execute. To resolve this hazard Install the pipeline for one clock cycle when the data memory access occurs. So, a stall is commonly called a pipeline bubble or just bubble. So, since it flows through the pipeline taking space but carrying no useful work. Okay, next one is data hazards. Data hazards, a major effect of pipelining is to change the relative timing of instructions by overlapping their instruction. So, this overlap introduces the data and control hazards. Data hazards occurs when the pipeline changes from uh, the order of read writes access to operand so that the order differs from the order seen by sequentially executing instructions on the unpipelined processor so minimize the data hazard stalls by forwarding the problem solved with a simple hardware technique called forwarding Actually, it is called as uh, bypassing and sometimes short circuiting. So, forward works as the ALU result from both EXR memory uh, and uh, MEM to WB pipeline registers is uh, always fed back to the ALU inputs. So, if the forwarding hardware detects the pipe, uh, pre, uh, the previous ALU operation has written the register corresponding to a source for the current ALU operation, control logic selects the forward result as a um, ALU input rather than the value read from the register file. Then, data hazards requiring stalls when the load instructions has a delay at latency uh, that uh, cannot be eliminated by forwarding alone. Instead, we need to add hardware called pipeline inter interlog to preserve the correct execution pattern. A pipeline interlog detects a hazard and stalls the pipeline until the hazard is cleared. So, this pipeline is interlog introduces a stall or bubble. The CPI for the stalled um, in instruction increases by the length of the stall. Then branch instruction. Next one is branch hazards. So, control hazards can cause a greater performance 
loss for our MIPS pipeline. When a branch is executed, it may or may not change the PC to something other than its current value plus 4. So if a branch changes the PC to its target address, it is a taken branch. If it falls through, it is not taken or untaken. So reducing the pipeline branch penalties. In this, simplest scheme to handle the branches is to freeze or flush the pipeline holding or deleting any instruction after the branch until the branch destination is known. So a higher performance and only slightly more complex scheme is to treat every branch is not taken, simply allowing the hardware to continue as if the branch were not executed. So the com complexity of this scheme arises from having to know when the state might be changed by an instruction and how to back out such a change. So implemented by continuing to fetch instructions as if the branch were a normal instruction. The pipeline looks as if nothing out of the um, ordinary is happening. If the branch is taken, however, we need to turn the fetched instruction into a non op and restore the fetch at the target address an alternative scheme is to trade every branch or taken as soon as the branch is decoded and the target address is computer we assume the branches uh, to be taken and begin fetching and executing the target that's all thanks for listening